and so on all that. Unfortunately, you know, some uh, other things on the road, you would say those are small things on the road. But if you look at the mountain from afar, well, you, if you look at Iran from afar, you can see the grandeur of what has happened in Iran, the grandeur of what the leader of the Islamic Revolution described as political epic, and that uh, epic realized. Where in this region you know that over the past 32 years, four times, four times uh, presidential elections have been held for four times, and each president actually, and each president that was elected actually, well, and the presidents who, and the presidents who were there actually, they were diff people from different groups, from from different yani, political tastes. So the model, the Western style of changing, of transferring the democratic power, the tra democratic transfer of power, that model has been used, but the same thing has happening, but with a national model, using a national and native model, without us being able to make a copy of their models. You see, everybody who has been trying to imitate others, they they couldn't create such a situation, and they couldn't uh, tailor that image, that situation to their own local situation. Even in the most democratic neighbor of Iran, at least uh, that neighbor has been has witnessed two military coup d'etats. You know, we have been able to hold four presidential elections, and uh, the popular vote was the uh, criteria. And once it happened eight years ago, and once that demand took place a few months ago, and even the same voting took place before that, demand, demand for change, demand, the will for change in the Islamic Republic of Iran, it takes place through ballot boxes. Time and again it has happened, and that's why other models of, uh, if we can call them democratic, the other democratic forms and democratic styles have not been able to be as stable as the models which have been which have existed in Iran. That's why Iran has power. Uh, we have, well, we have a fresh interpret, a new uh, interpretation of ruling and government. When this interpretation is coupled with the with the active presence of the people on the decision-making scene, and when it is coupled with the efforts of the people in order to resist hegemon hegemonic powers, when it is coupled with the resistance of the people against against the acquisitiveness of others, then that interpretation is coupled with the patience and forbearance of this people vis-a-vis -vis all the hardships and problems that they have faced through the imposed war and through the sanctions era, the sanctions imposed unfairly on the people. When they come together and join hands, then they will be, they will be converted into sort of power which will make your representatives be able to stand up to the greatest powers that exist today in the world, most of which it is one of the features of them, one of the great features. Well, you have been watching Iran's foreign minister, uh, Dr. Mohammad Javad Zarif, talking at the international, well, the uh, Iranian Atomic Energy Agency, of course, uh, talking about the background and the reasons uh, uh, why they had to go through such difficulties as for negotiating, and also talked about the history when there was uh, basically two superpowers and that now with the after the fall of the Soviet Union there was a different paradigm and with that paradigm actually those countries that were in power were afraid because now that the power would have to be shared would no longer be a monopoly on this power and all of this he was saying that you see this in the result of what has taken place in Geneva that after the victory of the Islamic Republic of Iran the Islamic Revolution in Iran that they felt threatened because Iran offered a possible alternative